Hello and welcome. This is The Network Berg, and in this lecture we'll be going over basic troubleshooting tools that you can use to figure out if there's any issues on your Microtech. So we'll primarily be looking at Ping, Traceroute and Torch, all three tools very useful in their own regard. Uh, sometimes you'll mix and match these tools to try and get to the root cause of a problem, but all of them are awesome to use. You can use them on Winbox or on the command line. Personally, I'd suggest using the command line for the pings and trace routes. Um, Torch, I definitely say Winbox is a bit more uh, friendlier to identify everything. But let's jump into it. I'm going to go into my uh, Winbox session now. Alrighty, I'm going to connect on to 192.168.88.1, which is my home microtech. And all of these tools you can access via the tools menu. So ping is there, trace route is there, torch is there. Um, there's also different places in Winbox itself you might be able to use these things. Like if I go into my IP neighbors and I right click a thing there, you might be able to do the ping there. Um, and the same for torch, if you go like to your interfaces and you right click an interface, you can torch it from there as well. But we'll get into that just now. First things first, let's just do some ping tests to see if there's maybe some issues on the network. So I'm going to open up a terminal window because I do think running the terminal for stuff like pings and trace routes is preferable because you can just copy all of the text um, from here back into an email or, or, or wherever so that you can quickly confirm that there is issues happening. So to do a ping test, it's as simple as typing ping and you can type whatever you want to ping. So I'm going to ping Google's DNS server and this gives me a lot of information. It tells me what I'm pinging. Uh, what the sequence number is, how big the packet is, uh, the time to live, which we'll go over in an MTCRE course, and our time. So the time is the response time that the ping takes to uh, get to the destination and then getting an echo packet back to say, hey, this is how long it took to get back. So you could almost say it took two milliseconds from my router to get to Google's DNS, and then from Google's DNS to get back to me took another two milliseconds. So that, that's roughly like the gist of it, how it kind of works. Um, but this is a great tool to identify if there are any issues on the network, because maybe a user tells you, hey, the network's unstable or it's slow. And then you could do something like a ping test just to verify if something is happening. Because if packet loss occurs or if there's high latency, then that is already a reason for me that something's happening on the network. It could be a degraded wireless link, it could be overutilization, it could be various things, but the moment you see stuff like packet loss or high latency, then you definitely know you can drill down on the network. If everything looks fine on a ping test, um, then more likely it could be something with the application itself that uh, somebody's using or the server that they're connecting to and not so much the network. But th this is always part of that server admin versus network admin where you, you guys are always fighting because the server guy says it's the network, the network guy says it's the server, and round and round we go. All right, but this is how you do a ping test. Next, we'll quickly do a trace round. <clears throat> and all I'm going to do is, same command. Actually, for trace route, you need to type tool and then trace route. And then you can type the destination of what you want to trace route. And obviously, you can use stuff, even with the ping, the question mark, to see if there's additional things that you want to fill in. Because maybe you want to do a trace or a ping from a specific source address, or you want to connect to a certain port or protocol or stuff like that. That is what you can use these different options for. But you could just use tool, trace route, and that IP address. And then the router will use its preferred source to get to that IP. So I'm going to trace route to Google's DNS. I'll hit enter. And then it already tells you exactly how it gets to Google's DNS server. So it, it tells you each and every hop along the way to finally get to Google's DNS server. And this is also very useful information because it can tell you if there is any packet loss happening between any of the hops. So that's very nice. Um, how many packets were sent, what the average latency looks like or the last latency. So this is an amazing tool if you're also having network connectivity issues, if you do a trace route to the destination, and then maybe you see there's packet loss happening between these two hops, then you can say, hey, Guys, there's something happening between these two hops. If you're managing those routers, then you can quickly fix it, whatever's happening there. Otherwise, you could escalate it maybe to your ISP and tell them, hey guys, here's the issue, we found it. Can you guys please log it with, um, with Google or Amazon or whoever so that they can help fix the issue. So that's how we can use Traceroute to identify issues on the network as well. All right, and then moving on, last thing I wanna show you is Torch. Now Torch is a wonderful tool 
because it allows you to see who is a bandwidth hog. <laughs> um, and what I can basically do is if I look at something like Ether One, if I double click on it, there's a torch button. And as I said earlier in the video, if you right click on it and you click on the torch button, it brings up this torch tool, which allows you to effectively see what's happening on that interface, how much traffic is passing over it, where the traffic is going. So this is very useful because maybe somebody is doing some, some type of torrenting and then you'd be able to catch them here because you'd be able to see which IPs they connect to, how much bandwidth they're using. And this is really useful. So what I might do is I might um, do a speed test. So let me just quickly open up a browser tab here. I'm just gonna move it to another window. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the speed test and we can see how the bandwidth shoots up across the network. So the speed test is busy running and you might see this running like, look how it's shooting up there, 100 megabits. And I can see exactly who the culprit is, where it's connecting to. So Torch is very useful for this thing because here I can see 192.168.1.47 um, is the destination IP. But th this is kind of like in reverse now, but I can definitely see what's happening with my bandwidth. It, it's a great explanation of why there is congestion on the network, why it's slow. So I could maybe set up something like a shaper to restrict traffic um, for like the speed test, this torrent or whatever. Or I could go to the user and, and say, hey, I, I can see you're doing this stuff. Um, can you knock it off? Because this is definitely causing a strain on the network. And you don't need to be limited to just seeing the IPs. You can select stuff like the protocols and ports. And I'm just gonna start that uh, torch again. And I'm gonna run another speed test. And then there you can see exactly what type of protocol or ports were used for this uh, connection. So this is also how you'd be able to figure out if it's maybe like um, torrenting or if it's downloading or if it's gaming or what, whatever it is. So Torch is another amazing tool. And these are the basic troubleshooting tools that you should be familiar with. I'm gonna end off the video here. I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.